was right. But then he literally threw me out of the mixing <laughs> session, which would not happen now. I mean, here I was a 20 something girl in the seventies <laughs> where, you know, the, uh, the phrase women in rock was still, you know, something uh, interesting, you know, a new thing. Speaking of solo records, let's jump back to the 70s and, and talk about two of the legends you worked with, Ian Hunter and, and Mick Ronson on your first solo album, Night Out, which featured the big hit, We Belong to the Night. Now, what was it like working with, with Ian and Mick around that time? Because we talk about the end of the kind of paradise and things like that. You were working on, on your album with these guys, weren't you? Yeah, well, it, it took a little time. Um, Steve Popovich, who was sort of the, the, the father of all this, you know, he, he signed Meatloaf and <clears throat> he signed me, you know, straight away. And he and I had been working and doing demos. And and then he uh, he introduced me to Ian and Mick. And we actually went up to the Bearsville studio, which was Todd Rundgren's studio, where Paradise had been recorded. <laughs> did some did some demos up there, and we all were agreeable with each other. You know, it, it, I I think that. My ignorance at the time sort of uh, was in my favor because I didn't really know that much about Mott the Hoople. <laughs> and I knew that Mick had played with, with, with Bowie and all that. But if I had been like, you know, a super fan, I probably would have been paralyzed, yeah. you know, with, with, uh, with adoration. But as it was, I just got to know them as, as artists and people. And then, of course, as time went on, I was like, holy crap. <laughs> look, 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 who, look who's here, you know. <laughs> and what was it like being in the studio then with with those guys? I mean, br them bringing their experience to it, and you you having had your experience with with the meatloaf sessions and everything. What was it like being in the studio with those two? Well, I think you know, particularly Ian, because Ian Ian was kind of like the I won't say father, but kind of the boss guy. Mm -hmm. and, and a couple of times, you know, I got the the impression that he said, "Oh, she's a Broadway singer," which I have done Broadway. But I'll say flat out, I am not a Broadway <laughs> singer. So he kind of gave me crap about that a little bit, and we had we had uh, run-ins during the during the uh, mix of the record because I was I was in there with the mix, and of course all I was doing was sitting there telling them the telling him the vocals should be louder, more <laughs> vocals, more vocals, and which I think some of it I was right, but then he literally threw me out of the mixing <laughs> session. Which would not happen now. I mean, here I was a 20 something girl in the seventies <laughs> where, you know, the, uh, the phrase women in rock was still, you know, something, uh, interesting, you know, a new thing. So here comes, you know, this bloke, as you guys would say, <laughs> uh, throwing me out of the studio, you know, but, uh, otherwise it was a ball. I mean, I remember this, the sessions for things like um, Young Lust, right? Yeah. Which which was um, just, uh, you know, with the lights down and, and Ronson playing that, you know, heart full of stone uh, a guitar riff and, and was just like improvised, you know, I mean, stuff like that. Oh, you special. know, because, because um, you know, uh, theatricality had a place because Ronson came from such a theatrical place. So he, you know, he certainly got it. And Ian did too, even though he gave me crap. <laughs> but it was, but you know, I'm not a, I, you know, I did Broadway, but because I'm kind of a chameleon, I was able to do it. But just being back doing rock and roll these, this past, these past, you know, it, from nine, um, 2014 on, I've also been going over to the Netherlands and Belgium and performing a lot too. So I just been getting back to real roots. Oh, I was supposed um, to, yeah. yeah. Um, just touching again on your, on your second album then and, and some of the things that happened around the second album. I mean, obviously it's famously documented that you, you dated Mick Jones from The Clash and um, they were obviously a huge band as well. And that led to a really <laughs> cool collaboration between yourself and, and, and Mick and Joe and the rest of the band Topper and all that sort of stuff. Not only on, on your second album, Spirit of St. Louis, but on, on their albums as well. You sang songs on, on Sandinista and other things like that. I mean, Obviously, personal things aside, I mean, how was that as a as a working relationship with you guys? Uh, it was fun. I was a little bit fish out of water. I was I felt like I was back in the studio with Ian Hunter because vocally I didn't think I was at my I was able to do my you know real rock and roll 
peak. You know, I mean, in this show we were just about to do, mm -hmm. we were doing um, a little mashup of Torchlight, which was from my second album, and uh, Hitsville UK, yeah. which, you know, I, I, Hitsville UK is basically me, you know, multi-tracked. And uh, we were doing going to do a great version of it, and I was excited about that. But it was, uh, it was, it was a whole, you know, new experience for me, a, you know, a life experience, you know, being in this, um, I mean, it was like, what, 79, you know, two years <laughs> after 1977, yep. when, you know, these guys and they and, they and, and other people created a, a whole new sort of genre and, uh, and, and life, uh, uh, I don't know when I say lifestyle, that's, that's, that, that reduces it. But, you know, and here I am like, Do -do -do. hello, uh, <laughs> I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> How I got into that. But anyway, it, I always say that <clears throat> life experience adds up to where you are right now. And I'm good. I'm good. I'm cool. <laughs> life what, is great. And what was it like being in the UK then around that time, uh, coming over here and, and experiencing all that sort of stuff? It was, you know, a little bleak for me. Uh, yeah, you know, that was, you know, right in the middle of the Thatcher stuff. And I just always remember something that's like emblematic for me is like when the pubs closed at nine or 10 o'clock, there would just be people outside of pubs just beating each other right, up, yeah. you know, because they, you know, their, their outlet, they'd been cut off. And, but it, it was a little rough and, and coming from New York, <clears throat> excuse me where really I had just I mean it's so crazy how compressed my my experience was in that that decade because I had just you know moved to New York from the Midwest from St. Louis in 1972 and here you know eight years later you know two three four five six seven, seven years later I think you know <laughs> seven eight years later here I am in a whole other whole other scene.